After analyzing the photograph of Columbia Gardens, students learn from oral histories what it was like to play in the city of Butte itself and will compare and contrast their play places with the play places of Butte's children. You should know. Does anybody know anything about Butte? <coughs> Yes, there's a lot of mines. That's exactly right. So Butte was a big mining town. There were lots and lots of mines, and there are lots of kinds of mines. And one of the kinds of mines that you're going to hear about are called shaft mines, and they're big holes that go straight down in the ground. And um, Butte has lots and lots of shaft mines. And so um, that's something that you're going to hear a little bit about when we talk about where the kids played. That might give you a little idea of what we're going to do. We are going to read um, some descriptions that real Butte kids, <coughs> except they're grown up now, but that real Butte kids um, gave for where they played. So we're going to read you their descriptions of their play places. And what I want you to do while you're listening is um, write down words that stand out to you. So when you hear something that stands out, write it down. All right, don't worry about getting the exact whole sentence or anything like that. Just anything that stands out to you that's, that seems important about what the description is telling us. It could be words or phrases, Yes. right? Yep, words or phrases. Good, um, so I'm going to read one and I actually have us both me reading both, but do you want to read one and I'll read one? Sure. Okay. Okay, so everybody have your pencil in your hand and your paper ready? Great. All right, so this one, his name is Frank. So you might want to write down Frank so that you know which one you're making the notes from. I might read it twice. Let's see how it goes. We used to drop holes, sorry, we used to drop rocks down the holes in the coverings of the old mine shafts and listen to them as they'd hit the wooden walls on the way down and finally splash in the water at the bottom of the shaft. No one knew how deep these shafts were or if the covering was rotten and would let one fall through. But no one ever fell in that I know of and no mining company ever put new covers on or fenced those dangerous holes to keep the kids out. I'm going to read this twice. Here we go. This is John. I spent a lot of time as a young kid at the sides of that tunnel. First of all, playing on that grade. I want everybody to be thinking about their words and descriptions that you wrote down and maybe some that you didn't have time to write down. I want you to think about the ones that stood out to you. Be willing to share those with your partner. Something else you could think about. If you had to draw this place that they're describing, John and Frank, if you had to draw this place, what words would help you see the place in your mind first so you could visualize? These are the things I want you to pair share about. What words and descriptions stood out to you? And if you had to draw it, what words would you use to help you visualize? 90 seconds starts in three, two, one. Go. <laughs> Words that I would do if I had a do in my picture would be um, hollow chemicals thing and then they and listen to that water. Um, mining stuff. And what are some words you would use to visualize? that before you drew it, if you were going to draw what Frank was talking about. Fences and railroads. Railroads. He was enthralled by railroads, I think. I agree. He played railroad. He sat on the trestle, throwing stuff off. Yeah, mine shaft. For John, it could be railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
And how high up were John and his friend Deadeye? Um, and they were throwing those like things six off. six stories. Yeah, can you think of a building that's six stories high? Yeah. Not in R. Lee, right? Mm-hmm. Where would you find a building that's six stories high? Oh, yeah. Okay, city. What about Missoula? Do we have one in Missoula, maybe? Yeah. yeah. We've got a few that might be six stories high. Okay, back to me, many. please. They were. Very good discussions. I love the share. And I think I pretty much got around to everybody, or Miss Baldwin did. Now there's a question I want you guys to think about, and we're going to share out this as a class, class discussion. Miss uh, Jelena, can you please read this aloud so everyone can hear? Was this kind? Was this kind? Was this the kind of place you would want to play? Why or why not? Boys, can you repeat what she just read? Was this the kind of place you would want to play? Why or why not? Take a minute and think about that and be ready to share with the group. Just think. And you need to provide evidence. Not just a yes or no, but some evidence as to why or why not. And who's willing to share? Thanks, Cheyenne. First. I would not play in those kind of places because someone can fall down the holes. Dangerous. Dangerous. I liked your evidence. Thank you. Next. Um, I would like to play at those places because it would be fun to see the trains go by and drop the rocks down the mine shafts. All right, two opposing viewpoints there, and I think they're both valid. Thank you, guys. Je- uh, Justice. I think I say yes because um, when you, well, when they get older, they can actually get like something, so they can climb down it too. Can you explain that? Well, I would play around it. You would. Why? Because I think it would be cool to um, hear the splash when the rocks hit the bottom. Okay. All right, Lexi. I would play there because you can go on a roller coaster if it works. All right. Okay, so right here. Uh, I want you to think about the three play places that we've heard about today. One, we looked down in the picture and talked about. Two was Frank throwing the rocks down the mine shafts, and three was John with the trains, right, and throwing the. Um, actually, he was throwing big Look, wooden pieces. Pine timbers or timbers, laggings. Laggings. Way, he was very high up, and he and his friend Deadeye were throwing them off of the, um, the trestle, which is a train bridge. So we have three kind of play places. On your card, on one side of your card, I want you to write down one similarity between a place that you play and a place that you heard about, and one difference. Okay, and you can think about the two that Mr. Reese and I read to you as new ideas, or you can refer to this picture because we already talked a little bit about that if you're out of ideas. Okay, so one similarity between a place that you play and a place you heard about, and one difference. Okay, now I want you to take your card that you just wrote on and flip it over so it, you have the plain, the, the blank side on the back. Or whichever side you didn't write on should be facing up. Okay, so take your card, flip it over. And on this side, I want you to write, I want you to think about what we described, what Frank described, and what John described, and this picture. And I want you to write one thing that you think would help the children in Butte have better places to play? What is one suggestion you would make for Butte children to have a better place to play? It doesn't have to be huge. It should be something that that could actually be made, that could actually happen to make kids in Butte have better play places.
sponsored by the Montana Historical Society with funding from the National Endowment for the Humanities.